ของวันเพรสเดอร์โลเพรสเดอร์โลเลดี้สกูดอีฟนิ่งเอเวอร์บอดี้อ่ะทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่นี่ทั้งกับเพรสกาดที่เราทุกคนอยู่ที่Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for today's journey. We thank you, Father God, that you allowed us, Lord, to make it even to this point, Lord, that we come before you, Lord. We humbly submit ourselves, Lord. First, we just want to all the cares of the day, Father God. We lay them at your feet, Lord. We are thankful and grateful, Father, that you allowed us to be here in your presence. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Just come in, please, and minister in me. To us through me, I, I empty myself out that you may pour your word out through me. I pray that everyone who hears this message will take it to heart, that they will be encouraged, that they will do the things that you are calling them to do, Father God. In these last days, I praise your name, I glorify you, I exalt you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Ladies, I, I'm asking, I'm soliciting your prayers um, because my job, I'm on the phone all literally from the time I log on. I can barely log on before the phone starts ringing. So um, by the end of the day, my voice is tired. I'm tired. And so y'all just pray for me, please, while we are going through this lesson, please just, you know, lift me up in prayer. So I was telling Evangelist that um, there were some things I know, excuse me, we have been called, excuse me, um, on this line, uh, conspiracy theorists, fear mongers, um, doing the most, you know, and who knows whatever else. And it kind of grieved my spirit a little bit because It was never any of our intentions to cause fear. But then I thought about that thing and I said that the fear didn't come from anything that we are saying because the things that we say are truly the word of God. These are not our own personal ideas. Um, we have to take what the Lord is revealing to us in the scriptures and we have to learn how to apply them to our lives. We have to understand when he is ministering to us, when he's telling us to move, when he's telling us to stand still, when he's telling us to prepare or to, you know, the book of Ecclesiastes is the book of times, you know, and it talks about the time, it's a time for this and a time for that and a time for this. So let us take heed that we are, as we all know, even unbelievers will tell you that we are in the last days. I never thought that I would be um, a part of the generation that would actually be considered the last generation before the return of the Savior. Because remember, we all have been hearing this. And I'm sure you all heard it since you were children. I'm, you know, my, my mother heard it when she was a child and she, you know, passed at 96. And so just like Noah, you know, where they were talking about it for 120 years, you know, and who knows before that, how long it actually was being said that the kingdom of God was at hand and we all had to repent. And so we've coming down to the wire, y'all. The book, the prophecies are being fulfilled. They're being fulfilled so quickly that we can hardly keep up. So tonight, Um, this is going to be a long journey. We're not going to take, you know, 95. We're going to take the business route. And we are going to, to go through these scriptures and we are going to talk about where we are, what to expect, and the promises that God has for us and our role. Because even though God has given us promises, he has made promises we still have a part to play. We are not to just sit idly by with our hands crossed, our legs folded, you know, our legs crossed and, and just wait for, you know, God to, 
to do these miracles or these things. We have work to do, you know, um, to help. It's not like God needs our help, but we have to help ourselves. So Matthew, we're the first, we're coming from the book of Matthew. We're going to start in the book of Matthew, um, the 24th chapter. But tonight, I want to encourage us to get ready. And we need to know what it looks like to get ready. And then once we are ready, we need to stay ready. And we need to know what it looks like to stay ready. But through all of that, we still need to be encouraged because perilous times are truly, truly upon us. <clears throat> and we have to remember, <laughs> Matthew 24 and 13 says, but he that shall endure it unto the end, the same shall be saved. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. He is not like man that he would lie, nor the son of man that he would have to repent. And just as sure as we see the fulfillment of the Bible as we journey through this life, we can rest assured that every promise that our Savior has made regarding us, regarding how he's going to keep us and deliver us, those things will surely come to pass. So let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. And we're going to be reading, <clears throat> we're going to be reading a couple chapters, like the actual whole chapter. And Matthew 24 is one of the chapters that we're going to read. And again, y'all, y'all pray for me because I was all over the place with this and God kept trying to bring me back. So I encourage you to get your Bibles. I encourage you to get a pad, a pen. Please, I can't see if you have something to say. So um, raise your hand, put it in the chat. Just, you know, interrupt me, like whatever it is to get my attention because I can't see you all on the screen. All I see is my screen. So if you have something to say, please just interrupt me. If you have something to say, please share it because the revelation that's coming is not just coming from me. Um, we all have revelation. God reveals things to all of us. And I may something that may just trigger something in you. Please, I beg you to share it this evening. So Matthew 24. Um, this is when Jesus was with his disciples. And they were coming from the temple. They were leaving the temple. And they were just amazed at how beautiful this temple was. And Jesus said to them, and I'm going to start at two, and I'm not going to read the whole thing myself. I'm going to ask y'all to, to volunteer to read, but I'm just going to start. So destruction is coming. Um, Matthew 24, I'm going to start at two. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him and privately saying, tell us what shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Y'all underline that. Take heed that no man deceive you. That's Matthew 24 and 4. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Eight, all these are the beginning of sorrows. I'm gonna stop right there for a minute. How many right now can honestly say that they are seeing what Jesus has prophesied would come to pass in the last days? Are we not seeing nations rise against nation? You know? What's going on over in the Middle East right now? What's going on with the Ukraine right now? What's going on with China and the United States and Iran and and uh, Egypt, Jerusalem? What's going on over there? They have said in the news that we are closer to war, World War III than we have ever been, ever. I don't listen to the news, but I do listen to the blurbs sometimes. And I do listen to the... the um, non-conventional news, the people who don't have an agenda, they just report the news. And there are things that are going on overseas that we will never hear on Fox, on CNN, or any of the other um, big networks, right? There shall be famines. Now, for as long as I can remember, there was always famine, especially over in Africa, you know, in the third world countries where they purposely were starving the people out. But how much more now are we seeing a famine even here over in the United States with all this homelessness that's going on with all these people that are living in these tent cities, you know, and pestilence, same thing. That's the sicknesses and the diseases. Now we know some of these are man-made, but what about the ones that are not? What about the, the diseases that are uncontrolled? Not the man-made diseases. You know, not the ones that they're purposely putting out to try to depopulate. And earthquakes and diverse places. We had an earthquake here in Philly this year. That's definitely a diverse place. You know, but they're, they're all over the place. There are many places that never had the ground shake before. And they're just, it's happening, y'all. It's unfolding before our eyes. And this is what Jesus prophesied to his disciples how many thousands of years ago. Anybody have any comments on that so far? On those ap apocalyptic signs? Yeah. Hey, everybody. How's all you ladies doing? And, and if there's any gentlemen, I don't know. But hello, everyone. This is Rhonda. Sister hey, Rhonda. How you doing, Sister Rhonda? I'm great. I'm doing wonderful. I do have news about um, over there in Africa. They do have a new pestilence uh, flu. I don't know what you want to call it. Another COVID-19 maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and I it, I forgot what they call it. it uh, somebody help me out. Y'all heard about it? Influ or something? It's a new inbox in or something. I can't. It's, it, I think it's worded inbox. Somebody can look it up right now. Google it. I think you're but, right. It's something pox because it's the one that's yeah, in the boils, yeah. right? The little bumps and stuff. Is that it? And that's in the Bible too. If you look at okay. Revelation, uh, it does state that that uh, something's going to come on men, little sores or something. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's what it is, but I just wanted to bring that uh, to the front here. Praise the Lord. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't even hear about um, what was going on over there, but I knew that they are I know it's something in China right now, too. So we're going to see more of that. Um, it, it's uh, COVID-19 was just a test run, y'all. And so the next um, outbreak is what's really they're going to use it to really um, take away what little freedoms we have left. I'm not going to digress, though. I'm going to come back. Anybody else have? Um, anything they want to add before we go on?
All right, nine, 24 and nine, Matthew 24 and nine. Then shall I deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This part right here. I just want to stop right here. We have been taught that there was going to be a rapture and before anything hit the fan, before any um, persecution of believers was start, that the people of God were going to be raptured up into heaven and we would not, not experience these afflictions or, or these things that Jesus himself said we will experience. It is my desire this evening, and I ask you, please, please, with an open mind, listen to what it is that not I am saying, but what the word of God is saying to us believers, to us followers of Christ, what the immediate or not so immediate future is holding for us. I know that the scripture is used, you know, that we'll be caught up and we'll meet him in the sky, but it's it's always used out of context because Jesus said right here, they will deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The word of God tells us that the servant is not greater than the master. We are not greater than our savior. And if he was afflicted and if he was beaten and bruised, what makes you think you are just going to be swept up into the clouds and not have to go through any of the afflictions or the hardships? The word of God says, count up the cost. What man is it that build a house that doesn't first sit down and count up the cost. So as a believer, I behoove you, I beg you, if you have not done it yet, to sit down and count up the cost. Because there's going to be a high price to be paid to stand firm in the truth of God and what we believe and know to be true. When the mark of the beast comes, we're not going to be able to sell, buy, nothing. If you still got a mortgage on your home, you're not going to be able to pay that mortgage if you don't have that mark. You're not going to be able to buy gas to put in your car to go to work. You're not going to be able to go to work because you're going to have to have that the a mark to get into work. You know, you're not going to be able to go to the doctor. You're not going to be able to fly and go on these fabulous vacations. So I just want to bring it into reality for us. That soon enough, soon enough, you know, it could be this year. It could be 10 years, 20 years. We don't know. But what we do know is that we will be afflicted. We will be hated for his name's sake. He said, if the world hates you, expect that because they hated me first. So we have to expect to be hated of this world. See, we haven't experienced that yet. Anybody, anybody got thoughts? What's your thoughts on that, ladies? Anyone? Okay. 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity shall abound. That's sin. 
that's that, you know, that sin that turns into, um, you get hard, you get cold, you know, it, it's something that you just do. You don't even see it as sin. It's just, I used to go to church with a lady and she used to say, that's just who I am. That's just how I am. No repentance, no godly sorrow, just mean for no reason. That's just who I am. So the word says here that many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Because many people are searching for Christ, there are many people who are going to take advantage of the desperation and the ignorance of those who are searching for Christ. They go to these churches, local assemblies, or TV. We have a lot of, uh, I call them Facebook prophets, TikTok prophets, um, overnight sensations, mega church pastors who are not teaching sound doctrine. And they are truly leading men and women to hell. They just are. And because we won't pick up the word for ourselves and read it. You don't know how many times I hear people say, my pastor said, my bishop said, my preacher said. But I ask you, what does your God say? What does the word of God say? So we have to be able to discern a false prophet. The only way we can do that is by getting in this book and reading this word and asking God to minister to our hearts that those words will be written on our hearts that we won't be deceived. Remember the word of God says, if it were so, even the very elect would be fooled in these last days. That's how good they are. That's how good they're going to be at their deceit and their deceiving because they will take the truth as the nucleus and they will present that truth, but they will wrap it in lies. And it is the wrapping of the truth and the lies that cause people to err. I think I gave the example um, last week when I was talking about my son who is searching, he's trying to um, get in a closer relationship with Christ because he told me he feel like Christ is leading him to ministry. That's something. That's saying something for this. This is my youngest son. So he was reading, but he was looking, searching, and he was on the internet. TikTok, I think. And it was a man on there, a couple of men who he happened to click on and they gave the scripture because, you know, they use familiar scripture, but then they twisted that word so horribly. And when my son came to me and we were talking about it and because the word is not written in his heart, because he's not there yet, he was being persuaded to think and believe what these false prophets were saying. And I had to, to go in the scriptures with him and show him where their error was. But if we are not reading the word of God for ourselves, we will be misled. We just will. So I encourage you, and I'm gonna be saying this all night. I encourage you, please get in the habit of picking up the word of God even if you read it and don't understand it, even if you read it and you feel like your eyes are crossing, if you just, I don't get, just pick it up and read it. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what it is because the, the spiritual things of God are not carnally discerned. You have to pray before you pick up that word and read it. And then you have to sit and meditate on that word and allow the Holy Spirit to minister the word to you. It's important that you know this word and that it's in your heart so that when you hear a false teacher, you're able to know and discern that that thing is false and you can reject it out of your spirit and not embrace it. Because if you embrace it into your spirit, you'll begin to follow that false teacher and you'll be in error. 
Is anybody listening? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So what he's saying is in these perilous times, when the love of many is growing cold, when people are haters, when you better not say nothing to them about the word of God, you can talk about anything else. You can talk about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but you better not talk about Jesus. God said, hold on. When you're persecuted, when you're ostracized, when you're talked about, when you're hated, hold on. Because if you hold on, if you endure, then you shall be saved. You win. All right. So, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, I'm 14, in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I used to think before, before the internet got big and before um, social media and all that stuff, I used to say, how is the word of God going to reach those places that nobody else can reach? How is the word of God going to reach them in the jungles of Africa or, or you know, Indonesia or, you know, these, these remote places, these islands, you know, there's a, a remote island in Africa where people are not even allowed to go visit because when you go visit, the, the natives try to kill you. They killed a couple of, of uh, people that missionaries that went there and tried to minister to them. Not only did they kill them, they killed them and they ate them because, because they're cannibals. And I was just thinking, Lord, how is the word of God going to reach all these everywhere in the world? And now we can see how Everybody has the internet. Everybody has access to the word of God. It's everywhere. And so when, when this word has reached every far reaching corner of the world, the, the word of God says, then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso read, let him understand. We know that they are building. I don't know, did they start building yet? Somebody tell me. The temple, the third temple. I know they, we, we keep talking about the, the heifers, the red heifers. Um, and I know that the 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 mount what is that the um that black rock that black rock the Muslims go around the dome of the rock yeah the dome of the rock I know that that is sitting now where they want the temple to be but have they started building the temple yet? I feel like they're being secretive on purpose because it was a big thing. And you even said this and you basically prophesied it that it's like, but then all when it was supposed to happen, everything just went silent. So it's, I think they're like, they've done it either in secretive or they haven't done it, but something is very secretive about it. Yeah. Because they, they talk about the gate that was closed and only Jesus is supposed to open his gate over there. Um, and his wall, they call it a gate, but it's actually a wall. Um, and, and they talk about the wall was opened. So we have to just keep our eyes on. Don't look at what the news is telling you to look at. Look at what the news is not telling you to look at. If you're somebody who watches the news, I encourage you not to because that's, you know, all they do is fear monger. But if you're going to watch the news, try to go to um, reliable news sources that are not affiliated with the conglomerates, the independent news sources is what I'm saying. You get a little more information. You get actually get the truth about what's going on in the world. 
But then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight not be in the winter nor on the Sabbath. Does anybody know why? He specifically said in the winter or on the Sabbath. No, but I would like some clarification about the babies and the sucklings and all of that. That would be very interesting for me to um, understand. Okay, absolutely. And we'll discuss that. We could talk about that. Anybody else before we talk about it? Why do you think he said flight not be in the winter or on a Sabbath? Come on, y'all. Talk back to me. No? All right. So now, um, Sister Rhonda, when it says, warn to them that are with child and to them that give suck, so when it's time for us to flee, because there's going to be a second exodus, there's nothing new under the sun. If there was going to be a rapture, that would be something new under the sun. So there's going to be a second exodus. And so people are going to, we're going to have to flee our homes. We believers, true believers of God, we're going to be hunted and we are going to be um, on the run. Now, let's just think about ladies when, they, um, when they're pregnant or after they have their babies. There's a certain amount of nutrition that you need, especially if you're breastfeeding, to be able to produce milk for your baby. If you were on the run, you, that means you're not you're half eating, you're not eating. Your, you know, your body is in a regener regenerative state because, you know, we are as close to death as we'll ever be when we give birth. So your body is healing you on the men. So now you have to worry about having enough nutrition to produce milk to feed the baby. And heaven forbid you try to find some formula. And remember during the COVID thing, formula was scarce you know so how are you going to feed this baby that you are giving suck to or that you are breastfeeding or this infant that you have to carry and you're on the run imagine running for your life with an infant so that's why he is saying woe unto them that are with child that's somebody who's pregnant. You're on the run and you're pregnant. You know, we know how it is when we're pregnant. I think just about everybody on here has been a mother or is a mother. You know, think about your body when you're pregnant. Your feet swell. I think sometimes your eyelids swell. Everything swells. You're always hungry. You always got to pee. You always tired you always just think about all of the things that are associated with being a pregnant woman or a woman who is breastfeeding a child and think about having to literally get up and flee from your home run for your life from your home how are you going woe unto you because how are you going to care for that child where are you going to get the substance to feed this baby while you running for your life, you know, into safe houses or in the, the woods or the park or wherever it is that you need to hide away from your from your pursuers. So woe unto them because it's going to be that much hard for you, that much harder for you. Mothers who have little children, you know, these babies got to eat. These babies get tired. They cry, they whine, they get cranky. 
You want to run. You got to be quiet. How are you going to keep this baby quiet? This hungry baby. So that's why he is saying woe unto you. That are, that's pregnant. Because let's just say you want to run and now it's time to deliver. How that's going to happen? Who going to do that? Now, pray that your flight don't be in the winter. Now, for those of us who live in the northern states, we know what it's like in the winter. Sometimes it's so cold, you know, your words freeze before they hit the ground. Again, you're in flight. You're running. You're being pursued. It's cold. The snow is on the ground. You know, Boots, hats, coats, gloves. You know, the food, The it's not easy to um, pick food, wild food. Like if you're in a park or something it, in the springtime, you know, certain earth, certain what we call weeds are growing up. You can feed yourself because the forest is green, because the grass is green, the, the flowers are in bloom. There are certain flowers that you can actually eat that are in bloom, but in the wintertime, everything is dormant. Everything is sleep. So if you're running in the woods, now you have to, you really have to scavenge to find what some substance to eat, you know, because everything is not producing. Only certain things are producing. Certain things are dormant. And so food is going to be scarce. And then scavenging to find food is going to be scarce as well. So that's why in the winter, if you flee and then, you know, it's going to be harder to feed yourself, to scavenge, to feed your children. The Sabbath, well, that's obvious because nothing in heaven moves on the Sabbath. We even are not supposed to be moving on the Sabbath. Our help comes from heaven. When we are running, when we'll be fleeing, when we'll be trying to get you know, to wherever it is the Lord is leading us to go, and it's on the Sabbath, the angels in heaven are not helping us because they don't move. They don't compromise or move on the Sabbath. So you literally going to be on your own. There's no exception to that. Even in that situation, God said to rest on that seventh day, which is Saturday. Friday evening to Saturday evening. He said to rest. And that's what he means. And heaven is resting. That means our spiritual help will be resting. We shouldn't be moving. We should be staying, sitting still, reading the word. Being I had a question. Mm-hmm. Now, if that applies then, then that should apply today. It absolutely so, does. If I'm in trouble on a Saturday, now you said heaven is resting. The Holy Spirit will not come to my aid? The Holy Spirit is always in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so when I pray... The Holy Spirit pray. is your, Right. The Holy Spirit is your your guide, the Holy Spirit is your uh, your counselor, your help. So now let's just put it this way. If we were truly doing what we were supposed to be doing on the Sabbath, why would we even be in trouble on the Sabbath? If I'm sitting down when I'm supposed to be on the Sabbath, every, all my pleasures and everything that I want to do is supposed to be Put aside. I'm not supposed to be doing that. Now I'm supposed to be. Now I can go out and you know minister to people. I can't go out and be a help to people. But I'm supposed to be in in the presence of God. I'm supposed to be resting, reading His Word. You know, meditating on His Word and and doing those things. You know, we put ourselves in situations that we should not, 
And then we call on God for help. Now, that's not to say that God won't help you. But is that, I don't know, because I'm not God. I don't know how he would help you. I don't know what help he would send or how he would send it. But I know that on the Sabbath, heaven rests. I know that because the word says that. I'm not God. So I honestly can't say yes or no, he's not going to send help. The Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is your teacher, your guide, your protector. Yes. So I honestly can't answer that. I don't have the answer for that. But if you are doing what you are supposed to be doing on the Sabbath, it's very unlikely that you'll find yourself in a situation where you're in trouble. But if you are, then God will move the way according to what he wants to do. Somebody was getting ready to say something. No, who was that that was getting ready to speak? I'm sorry. Hey, ladies, this is Rita. No, I was just agreeing with you. You had took the words out of my mouth when I was saying that the Holy Spirit is within you. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And we have to be um, mindful of the Holy Spirit. We have to learn how to listen. Amen. <laughs> Sister Rhonda. Yeah, I hear everything. I'm getting ready. I'm in the chat box because y'all know it's 802. You know, <laughs> shut eye for me. All right. All right. So anybody else? Anybody? There was one little commentary, <clears throat> not, a, not a commentary, but a teaching that Derek Prince did, and I heard this years ago. And he said, too, like those where it says like those in judea if if it well we know anyway let me just stick to this part <laughs> he was just saying <laughs> that yeah because i don't want to go left or all the way off but if but i think when he was talking about it he was referring to the geographical region and not the actual people you know but he was saying like if you're in judea at that time in israel he was saying you know he lived there for many many years so he was saying like people are not going to be working there people there's going to be no traffic out like people are going to be basically indoors because of the sabbath honoring the sabbath so if you have to flee you won't won't be able to be inconspicuous or without notice it's going to be very noticeable and like you said they're going to be pursuing you so you know it would be a hard way to hide basically absolutely and you're, you're already they're already going to know who you are anyway because they are passing the um they're passing the sunday law they're passing it it's it's coming they're passing it um, they they keep trying to get it through, but for some reason it keeps getting blocked. But they're going to keep passing it and pursuing it until they get it passed where Sunday everything is going to shut down. When I was a little girl, it was called the Blue Law. And I remember everything was closed on Sunday. I mean, everything. And they're going to go back to that. But this time, when they close everything down on Sunday, they're going to um, require that everybody um, participate in... Um, a religious tenet for this whatever this one world religion is going to be so when they pass it this time you'll really be they'll really know who you are because you're not going to be participating in their sunday um worship and you're actually going to be um you know on a sabbath you're actually going to be worshiping and, and following christ on a sabbath and so sunday everybody else is going to be sitting still and you're going to be moving so that's going to identify you as a believer and follow Christ too. All right, for then shall, 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as what not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. 
and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, days shall be shortened. Then if any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false prophets, false Christ, and shall grow, show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning come out of the east and shines even unto the west, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So what he's telling us is, in these last days, because it's going to be scary, y'all. It's going to be scary. Even, even for those of us who know and have confidence in Christ, we still are wrapped in this flesh, and this flesh still reacts to our environment. And things are going to be crazy. The word says like it's never been before. It said it right here. Great tribulation, such as what not since the beginning of the world. So that means it's going to be pretty bad out here in this world. And we are going to be looking for relief, a sign, Jesus, help. People are going to be getting desperate. And these false prophets are going to say, come over here. We found him. We found him. He over here. Come, come with us. He's in this, he's in this area. He's in this region. You know, he, he's over here. Y'all just, if you just make it here, that puts me in the mind to somebody like Jim Jones. I don't know if y'all remember Jim Jones. Y'all might be too young for him where he had all those people to go to Guyana with him because he told them he was the Christ. And then when he got them to Guyana, he poisoned them and who wouldn't drink the poison, they shot and killed them. So it's the same thing, the false prophet, they'll win your confidence. But when you go to where they are, they will surely kill you. So what the word of God is telling you, don't believe it. You know, you know, you will know when Christ comes, because he is going to crack that sky and every eye shall see him. He's coming with 10,000s of thousands. So if it, somebody tell you that Christ is over here, you know, in uh, Jerusalem, or Christ is over here in Ohio or Tennessee or wherever, don't believe it. Sit still. Because you know Christ is coming because you will, every eye will see him. He's not coming secretly, hiding in some place. He is coming boldly. Everybody's going to know that Christ came because he is going to crack that sky. So be vigilant and know that he is not wherever these false... Uh, prophets are telling you that he is and people are so easily persuaded y'all we got to stop being so easily persuaded because somebody is a good orator or because somebody is animated or they make you feel good in your flesh and you jumping up and you getting happy we got to stop falling for the okie doke we have to grow up and be spiritually mature and come out of our emotions Stop letting your emotions rule you. This is not an emotional journey. This is a spiritual journey. So whatever it is that you are being ministered to, let it not um, minister to your emotions. Let it minister to your spirit man. And if it does not align with the spirit man, which is where the word of God is, then don't follow it. I don't care how many they do. I don't care how happy they make you that you want to get up and run around the church. If it's not sound doctrine, reject it. 
please don't be taken in by these false prophets. Anybody got anything? Nope. Oh, Elder, I was just going to say, Sister Rita, was you getting ready to say anything else? No, well, go ahead. Mm -mm. No, I was just going to say, Elder, you just keep talking about, you know, just not being deceived and having that sound doctrine. But I was going to just say, too, as parents, too, to really just keep checking in with the children and find out what they're learning because they are teaching them false doctrines in school too and it can change it's designed to change and shape reshape you know what you've taught your children you know so the science classes the art classes you know just at, like things that you wouldn't even think that they're teaching these children so and not just the little children the older children even the college students y'all we got to check in with them because they're trying to reshape our children's uh belief system that's awesome. that's an awesome point. And I thank you for saying that. This is the thing. As believers, we have to we have to send our children out equipped. We have to stop assuming because we have them sit in the church with us that they know Christ, that they understand um salvation, that they believe even. Because there are many people who grow up in church and sit in church and don't even believe because they don't even know who Christ is because to them, it's just, oh, I got to get them to go to church. So we actually have to sit down with our children and minister to them. It's very important that you cover your children under the blood of Jesus. It's very important that you cover your children under the blood of Jesus, that you have Bible study. If they're old enough, to have Bible study with them, have Bible study with them. If they're away at college, do a Zoom Bible study. It's so important that we have our children know who God is. Because what if all hell breaks loose and your child is not even with you? Your child is at school. Your child is away at college. Your child is on vacation. They have to have that word of God in their heart and they have to be taught. Just like we teach our children, they tell us to give, um, um, what is it, the plan? If if the house catch on fire, you know what, what door to go out of and what window to jump out of or what. The same way we have these plans for natural disasters and things like that, we have to have a plan to teach our children how to um, be prepared how to stand up against the devil, how to pray, pray for themselves. They have to know how to pray for themselves. They have to understand the power of Christ that lies and dwells within them. They have to have a strong spiritual base and foundation in the home before they even leave out the house so that anybody who tries to persuade them, they won't be able to get in because they are rooted and grounded in the word of God themselves. That's your responsibility, mom, dads, no dads are on here, but it's our, it's mom and dad's responsibility to get these children to know who God is, to know the power of God and to know that power that God has given them. Y'all agree? Hallelujah. 28, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So again, that's just reiterated. He's coming with great fanfare. He's not going to sneak in downtown and be hiding, hiding up in the hotel for you to go to the hotel to, to see that Christ is over there. 
when he come and crack that sky, it's with great fanfare. It's with a whole bunch of noise. You know when the heavens, just think about how loud thunder is. Sometimes when you have those big thunderclaps, just magnify that. The magnitude of him cracking the sky and coming down. Come on, y'all. Use your imagine, use your holy imagination. With great fanfare, with great rumbling, he is going, y'all gonna know it. He's gonna brighten the sky. He's gonna, he gonna tear it up. So if somebody come to you and say, he over here, the devil is a liar. Because my word tells me everybody gonna know. Everybody. Wait a minute. And the part that gets me, because, you know, this game says he's coming with great power and glory. Yes. So it's like you're not even going to, in my, the way I imagine it and perceive it, your spirit is going to be so, how we, like anytime anybody in the Bible encounters the true and living God, the Bible says they're like dead men before him. I don't, I can't even imagine that you would even be able to run to the park, down to the park or down to Tennessee because you're going to be like a dead man because that great power and that glory, we can't even stand before it. Exactly. So that's why if somebody tells you he's over here, you know, that's a lie. It's impossible that he's over there because if he was over there, y'all wouldn't even be able to tell us that he was over there. <laughs> Amen. So now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all of these things shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Sure enough, if God said it, it's going to manifest and come to pass, y'all. He says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. Right? Because we're going we gonna to be living. We just, you know, we're going to be. He said, marrying and giving in marriage. That means everyday life. Life is just going to be life as they always say. And then, boom. Just in a twinkling of an eye. But he wants you to be faithful because we don't know the day nor the hour that he is coming. And I'm going to jump down to 43. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the son of man comes. Who then is faithful and wise, is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find him, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So this is the thing. Going right back to that parable of the, the ten virgins. You need to be about your father's business right now. And your father's business is not scoring it, putting on your armor, getting all armored up, and going to church and sitting on that pew. What good is that armor if all you're doing is going to church, throwing some money in the pan, dancing on your sins, getting happy in your flesh, 
and going home, raising hell, and not being about your father's work, not reading his word, falling in, in the hands of false prophets. Come on, y'all. It's time to get ready. It's truly time to be about your father's business. Playtime is over. Everybody, and I don't know how many, it says, I don't know who's on here. It says five people are on here, okay. So the five people that are on here, you know Christ. You've been coming on this line for a while, I'm sure. You hear the word. You know what's required of you. Not because we say so, but because we read it in the word for ourselves. And I told y'all, bear with me, y'all. I'm taking, I'm taking the, the, the business route. We're going a long way. I promise you, eventually, I'm going to get to the point. But right now, I just want to encourage you. Let's not be taken in by false prophets because we're too lazy to read the word for ourselves. Let's not do that. I need some feedback. Anybody? I just, I take it too, Elder, like you really are just sounding the alarm. And after that ritual that they did live worldwide on national TV at the Olympics, the, the, the opening ceremony, yes, but the closing ceremony is what really did it for me. Um, when they that ritual that they did that was showing the fallen angel falling the angel falling from heaven and a portal opened up with all these other uh, fallen angels demons coming to the earth bringing this false enlightenment I mean it was just this whole big mess but if you know your Bible you know that that was some symbolism for showing us that victory of the Antichrist in the earth. And so the the Antichrist, like, so it, it just shows how close, like even Matthew 24, what Jesus is talking about here is, in, it's just so close. And they're show it's right before our eyes, but you would never be able to discern what that closing ceremony was about at the Olympics if you don't know the scripture. And remember when they um when they started when they started the super collider back up at CERN, they did the same thing. Their ritual with the fallen angel in the portal. So many of their rituals are pointing to the Antichrist. It's not because of coincidence. It's not like you said, beautiful art. It's literally they're showing us. And so in my spirit, it just tells me that it's closer than we think. Oh, it's absolutely at the door. The fact that they have gotten so bold with their debauchery, you know. Um, but again, if you're not well versed in the word, if you just open up the Bible when the man, a woman, a guy say, "Turn with me to this," and then they pick out two or three verses and they expound on those verses to get you happy enough to dig in your pocket and give them all your money. Then you go home empty pockets and still hungry because you still haven't gotten a word. You still haven't been fed. And then you go home and you starve to death because you're not picking up the word to feed yourself. We have to be responsible. Again, we have a role to play in this, y'all. This is our soul salvation. This is your eternity that we're talking about here. So I, I really want y'all to get ready. I really want y'all to, to get serious, to, to hunker down and to really get serious about your soul salvation because you don't want to be caught with your work undone. And if you get ready now, then you won't be trying to get ready when you should already be ready. Yeah. Be ready so you ain't got to get ready. That's right. 
Yeah, I can definitely contest to that, though. I, my memory, you know, like I always explain to y'all before, like where I do suffer from dyslexia and I know that, but I could, I can definitely contest to when I read the word is more stored in my memory than hearing someone else go over it outside you know like just opening it up and them reading it like um I feel it in the spirit when we on the line together but as far as memorizing the word you know like it, it's definitely different when I read it myself for sure absolutely, absolutely because the Holy Spirit has a chance to minister to you directly to your soul amen mm -hmm. yeah so that's why it's very important. And you want to be intimate with Christ because when you call him, you want him to know your voice. You don't want him to be like, depart from me. Who that? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As much as I speak, I, I know I'm heard, honey. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen the work. <laughs> I've seen the work, but I definitely like even, you know, hearing y'all and being on the line with you guys and also with some others, you know, some other uh, ministries, you know, my family, my siblings and stuff. Um, it definitely gives me something to go back to and read myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I definitely feel it in the spirit over the phone. And like, I feel like I'm in your presence. But it, it once we hang up or once I get free time, because a lot of times I am on the clock. Um, and I just sit. I sit with myself. I may not be as vocal with others, but I'm I'm very vocal with God. Amen. Amen. That's very important. So, ladies, turn to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. And this this is another, we're going down another um business route. We gonna hit the main highway, probably not tonight because it's eight thirty. But I thank y'all for bearing with me so far. But again, I just want to just bring home the point again. Um, about the importance of knowing that who God is, and the things that will come to pass, surely will come to pass. Is somebody willing to read Second Thessalonians 2, the first five verses? I'll read it. Thank you. The man of lawlessness it's, it's amazing because I just read this today. So praise the Lord. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by prophecy or by a word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction, he will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now, do you want me to continue? Yeah, you go ahead. And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the Let's stop right there, sis. Okay. So thank you. So again, being reminded that the day of the Lord 
shall not come except there come a great falling away. You know, and we see the great falling away is happening now. People are not um, following the truth. Um, I've never seen so much debauchery as I have seen in the modern church. Uh, I've seen, it grieves my spirit, some of the stuff that we see in church, y'all. The way the women are dressing, the way the men are dressing, the way the pastors have a first man. Um, everything goes in church. It's just like the world. You saw uh, where they were doing the, the, the New Year's uh, surf and swag or whatever they were doing. Like the church is just a joke. And so, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was saying I agree, including the youth having the tablets in the end. I mean, children that's of age, you know, not babies, not two-year-olds. And I'm talking about nine-year-olds. And it's like, okay, if they're not going to serve the purpose, it's okay to leave them at home. Right. Absolutely. Because, again, they're not paying attention. You know, but the enemy is going to take the opportunity to take all of that after that great where we are now that falling away now the enemy is right for him to come in and set himself up to be seen as the savior because the church is falling away because there's no love he's going to exalt himself and show himself that he is god and this is the part right here for the mystery of iniquity does off already work, and only he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. Do y'all know that there will be a time when the Holy Spirit is going to be taken out of the land? Do we realize that? Say that again, I'm sorry. There will be a time on earth here because right now the Holy Spirit holds back a lot of what is going on in the world. Like the, there are a lot of things that are going on at the Holy Spirit. His hand stays, it stays. You know, some of the evil that, that's being pushed out, the, the Holy Spirit like stops it. Like, no, that's not going to happen. But the word tells us that the Holy Spirit is going to be taken away. It's going to be taken out of the land. He's the governor. He's the governor of the land right now. So sin can't abound, but so much because the Holy Spirit is the governor. You know, it's like a guard at a gate. Mm -hmm. you, can't get, you can't get past this gate because this guard is at this gate. But there's going to be a time when that guard, that Holy Spirit is not going to be there to guard that gate. Y'all understand that? Have you ever even been taught that? No, it, says right here. Mm -hmm. it says it right here. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Because when the Holy Spirit is drawn out, when he's taken out, then the, the enemy really going to lose his mind then. And then that's when the, that's when the Five, that's when that wickedness is revealed. Where, where is that at? Seven, Second Thessalonians 2, 7. 7, okay. And then that's when the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That means his word shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So yes, he's coming. He's like Mine doesn't read like that. However, 
um, Sister Carrie and Prophetess Sister Carrie Ann has been saying that since I've been watching her for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I just was never, I didn't know exactly where I could find it at. Mine's, I read it before, but it says, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so. Oh. See that? So, okay. Let me go ahead and highlight that. I guess that answered that. What y'all think about that? Any thoughts? Any comments? Commentary? Is this a revelation? Was that a revelation? I do believe that the Holy Spirit is the restrainer that is definitely holding back darkness from level, because there's already darkness here, but it's levels of darkness because God is, I believe it's a, it's like God's mercy and his grace. He's restraining levels of darkness that we wouldn't even be able to tolerate or stand. So, he, so, so it's not going to be until that appointed time in exactly. which the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way to allow God's will and God's plan. And that's when the Antichrist will come. But that goes back down to what we talked about with CERN. That's why they're, they're uh, messing with the firmament. The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is the the firmament is the Holy Spirit because remember remember yeah come on now remember that's God hovering over the waters mm -hmm. restraining the deep mm -hmm. so yeah. so when the Antichrist comes y'all remember he comes up out of the abyss which is the deep mm -hmm. so yeah man it's that's powerful and the Holy yes the Holy Spirit withdraws the Holy Spirit is going to be withdrawn. So that this enemy can get all puffed up. So that he can be brought low. It's true anyhow. Sister Chris, you feel like reading some more? Okay, you can where, start. Where, did, where was I? Did I stop at what eight? Yeah, you can you can um you can go to nine. Yeah. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie, and all the ways that the wicked the wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion that will believe the lie. And so they will all be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Can, 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 can we give a round of applause for us believing the truth? Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Listen, y'all. This is why. Again, we always and and it's not it's not church fashion. It's really not. But this is why we always tell y'all that you have to know who God is for yourself and know the truth of God for yourself. Because if not, you are going to believe and follow after these false prophets. And I know I've been harping on these false prophets all night, but I need y'all to understand the danger, the danger of a false prophet, how dangerous that is. They will have you sitting in church thinking that you are, you can, uh, you know, Monday through Friday, or Monday through Saturday, raise all kind of hell. I mean, all kind of hell. Get up on Sunday, throw some money in the pot. Again, dance over your sins and go ahead on, and you're going to make it into heaven anyhow. And when somebody like this ministry comes to you and tells you that that is not the truth, that you have to repent, that you have to be holy because God is holy and without holiness, no man shall see God. 
when a ministry like this comes and tells you that you can't just be walking around being sinful and dirty and do whatever you want to do and you hate you hate the truth you hate the person who brings the truth and then you start you know you you're bashing oh they they doing too much oh it don't take all that all that so now you begin to believe the lie that you can just be dirty and sinful and God is just going to accept you and all your filth into his righteous kingdom. That is not how it's going to work. And that is why we harp and harp into you and tell you, you got to clean yourself up. You got to be holy. You got to fight your own flesh. You got to fight your flesh. You got to die to yourself daily. You got to die to your flesh you got to pick up that word of God and read it. You got to separate yourself. Get away from those old friends that's going to lead you to the club, to, to, to smoke hookah, to drink, to go out and party. Get away from that family member who going to convince you to burn them at the, a sage and, and use them crystals. Get away from those things that cause you to be tripped up and stumble and believe that lie that you can go to church and swag and sway or whatever that was that they were doing, that you can go to church with your body con dresses on and cause men to stumble because somebody dealing with a, a spirit a, a spirit of uh, lust and you come in there looking like a harlot and you think it's cute, and you think it, uh, everybody just jealous of you because you got a, a nice body, come on. Come on. Clean up. Get your mind right. Stop believing the lies. Stop believing these false prophets that told you that their blessing is around the corner, been around the corner 20 years. Stop believing that lie that if you pay your tithes and, and you could just speak that thing into existence, never mind that you didn't repent, never mind you got hatred in your heart, never mind you got unforgiveness and bitterness, never mind you a liar, you a fornicator. Don't believe the lie. Pick up the word of God and see where it says, without holiness. No man shall see God. What is holiness? That is set apart. Don't touch that unclean mess. Stop watching them pre TV programs that's promoting fornication and, and homosexuality and cheating and lying. Come on. Get your eye gates and your ear gates together. Get your heart in alignment with the word of God. The hour is drawing nigh. If you don't get it together now, tomorrow might be too late. It's not promised, y'all. It's not promised. If there were, if you go to a local assembly and they not teaching the truth, if every time you go there you feel good and you come out happy and you don't, you ain't get no edification, but you know you happy because you were uh, justified in your sin, you better get out of there. If the, you go to a word, if you go to a Bible study or you go to a church or assembly and the word didn't cut you one way when it came or when it went, you better get out of there. If there's no conviction, is there no call for repentance? If there's no call for holiness, you better get out of there. I hope you hear me. Hallelujah. The word of God says he's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now you're a reprobate. Now you won't even, if you hear the truth, you won't even receive it because your mind, your conscience is seared. He said that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. It's not a sin in the world worth me going to hell for you. I don't know about you. It's not a sin in the world that's worth me going to hell for. I'm talking eternity, y'all. Hell is eternity. I agree. It's eternity. Good night, ladies. 
But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord Jesus, because God has from the beginning chosen you. Cho he chose you from the beginning to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to be singing hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You were destined from the beginning. He chose you from the beginning. You're not here by your own hand. You're not here because one day you woke up and said, I'm just going to follow God. God pursued you. Come on. You precious to him. Where until he called you. Did. Go ahead, sis. We didn't, you? we didn't hear oh. you, Chris. Say that again. Oh, I just was saying, yes, he did. He really did. Yeah. Since I was a little girl, he was pursuing me and Absolutely. all of us. A Absolutely. All of us. How many of you, ran? I know I was running from Christ. I ran for him <laughs> years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and mm -hmm. Tasha Cobb got that song, I'm Chasing After You. No, he was chasing after me. <laughs> <laughs> right? She said, where to he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, come on, y'all, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught whether by word or our pistol. Now, when it says hold fast to traditions, it's not talking about the traditions of man. Right. It's not talking about the rules and regulations of the church. It is talking about following the laws, the precepts, the statutes, and the commandments of God. Those are the traditions that you need to hold fast to. The traditions of God. Y'all hear me? We hear you. We're right there with you. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. I told you we're going we gonna to go the long way. We're taking, we taking a long scenic route to get to this point. Second Peter 3. Second Peter, third chapter. Anybody got any commentary, thoughts? I liked how Chris's Bible read uh, what you just read in Thessalonians, how it said, it just stuck out to me, how it said, you know, that they delighted in evil. And it just made me think about, you know, what's like, what's in my heart? What do I delight in? That's not of God, you know? Absolutely. Because they relish in their sin. Right. Loving it, loving the sin, just glorifying it. Just uh when I think a couple Fridays ago when uh we were watching a video and when the pastor was saying, um the pastor on the video was saying, you know, that they revel in their sin. You know, they're secure in their sin, they happy in their sin. You know, they look look proud of it. Delicious. Absolutely. Second Peter three. Somebody want to read? We only got a couple minutes, y'all. We just gonna what we got? Ten minutes. We just gonna do what we can do in ten minutes. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffering and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, Everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. 
but they deliberately forgot that the long that long ago by God's word the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of the water and by water <laughs> Whew. by these waters also the world of that time was deluded and destroyed by the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day okay. being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly you want me to keep going yes but do not forget this one thing dear friends with the lord a day is like a thousand years and a 